Hello everyone, Mikey Dare Panginator here, and let's talk about the 23rd Dev Diary for Hearts of Iron 4, Man the Guns, and Ironclad. And this one is about the new naval combat system. We have Podcat back, numbers and arts not final, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, this was posted on Thursday instead of um, Wednesday like it normally is. And uh, I am, of course, late getting this video posted because it was finals week. But first semester of God's was done, so let's get to it. So yeah, the, you know, this is uh, going to talk about the core changes coming to the naval combat system. And uh, so, you know, mission change, we've seen that in previous dev diaries with a strike force and patrols and all of that. And uh, a future one will talk about how submarines operate, but this one also, this one covers how submarines operate in regards to actual combat so uh the problems well the problems with the old system uh were pretty much nailed down as the following battles are extremely decisive so tiny mistakes have bad consequences combats tended to snowball as everyone and their mother's fleet piled in a big fleet was always better together with the above point promoted doom stacking and then the inferior interface gets very confusing as ships close with each other and uh, distance overall is very hard to show in balance. And also it is easy to miss a combat happening while busy elsewhere. And finally, its simulation nature meant balancing was incredibly hard, resulting in things like all battleship fleets performed the best. And so now, introducing battle lines. Battle line. So uh, to deal with the distance and screening issues, we have split up the battle into four areas per side to represent position and distances. So screens, which is where your screen ships go, these are the two kind of closest to the middle, and uh, they're closest to the enemy and protect the ships behind them. And then uh, after that, you have the battle lines, which is where your big guns sit, which is where you know, you're going to have heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships, pretty much anything with heavy, long range guns. And uh, they will you know, also help to protect carriers and convoys behind them. And then, of course, the zone behind that, the furthest zone back, is where carriers are. Um, carriers are you know, protected by the other two lines. And uh, if convoys are part of a combat, say if you're doing a naval invasion or you know, main battle fleets or convoy rating or whatever, this is where the convoys will be. And then the fourth zone is under the sea. And uh, of course, uh, it works uh, more like two areas. So you have spotted submarines and hidden submarines. Um, spotted submarines will be engaged with depth charges and uh, the unlocated ones, well, if you, you can't shoot what you can't see. And uh, splitting things up in uh, Discrete distances like the old like the old system you can kind of see and better feel the impact of Positioning and distance and you know, it's easier to see what's going on now. Of course. Uh, here's another screenshot From Twitter which you know labels all of them in case y'all didn't understand my uh, description uh, so The area that ships are assigned to depends on which weapons they have uh, so things, you know, tie, will tie in nicely with the ship designer. And uh, rule f rules for combat now largely depend on how different weapons interact with the areas. So uh, let's, so we're going to, of course, talk about what they all mean. And uh, first, we're going to look at a summary of it up top. Uh, I think I forgot. Okay, it goes over what the little anchor with the percentage is, and then I think you have light guns. Heavy guns, torpedoes, anti-air, and depth charges. So light guns. They, they're they small caliber guns. Uh, the armaments on destroyers and light cruisers and secondary armaments on heavier ships. Uh, the job of light guns is to hit and kill smaller, fast-moving ships. They uh, don't have the armor piercing to lay down serious hurt on capital ships, but they, and they can only attack one line over. So screen ships can shoot other screen ships, and when there are no more enemies... The, no more screen ships. You can shoot the enemies behind the capital ships. And then capital ships with secondaries can fire from behind the safety of their screen at enemy screens. So pretty much just pretty much any any uh, light guns can hit the first enemy zone. Uh, sounds like regardless of where they are. I don't know 
how this would work with carriers with secondaries, like, you know, kind of a Graf Zeppelin type build, but we'll find out soon enough. So after light guns, you have heavy guns, which are, you know, your hard hitting armor piercing guns, which are designed to take out big ships. They, uh, you know, have trouble shooting at fast ships, but when they do, it does a lot of damage. World of Warships, take back your AP nerf, please. A uh, little cross game stuff there, but anyways. Uh, heavy guns have the range to shoot over one enemy line, so even if the enemy battle line is screened, they can shoot over the screens at the battle line. Torpedoes are the next category. Uh, they are big capital killers. They ignore armor, have big damage, but are terrible at hitting small and fast ships. And they can't hit any line as long as it's not screen. They can hit any line as long as it's not screened properly. So, okay, so yeah, that little icon with the anchor is screaming, so I think. So if your screening is down to 50%, and then half the enemy torpedoes can be fired at your battle line. And if the battle line is also weak, some torpedoes can slip through and hit carriers or convoys. Next, we have anti-air, which works a bit differently. Uh, when firing back at enemy planes, a ship will also get part of the fleet's AA armament to help in. So uh, it's very nice for you to make sure your support ships or battleships um, if you focus on carriers, are stacked with as much anti-aircraft as possible. Then we get depth charges. Uh, they're the only weapons that can hit submarines, and it only works versus revealed subs. Uh, and then also carrier planes. Uh, the carriers uh, can carry you know different kinds of planes. Still, naval and dive bombers, which help attack other ships, and fighters, which help protect yourself. Uh, and the whole air model regarding naval combat is now more in line with the rest of the game and takes place in the air zone, as you would expect. So it can now be disrupted, which uh, this fixed a bunch of issues that they had with the interface between land-based and aircraft carrier, land-based aircraft and aircraft carriers. So we can see the uh, damaged, uh, some damaged convoys or whatever, and you can see how much damage they received by light guns and by torpedoes. And uh, in, you, can, you can see a loadout of what sunk your ships. Uh, moving on next to the weapon summary. Uh, okay, no, that, that number wasn't screen value. That is positioning value. This uh, simulates how well positioned your task forces are. So a low positioning could mean that all your screens are scattered in the storm and your capital ships are wide open to attack. And uh, it affects, so positioning affects screening directly and at a low value will hurt the fighting ability of the ships as they won't be in optimal range uh, or have you know another ship fouling the range, etc. Uh, so a big effect of positioning is the relative sizes of the fleet. So bigger fleets have an inherent penalty to positioning versus a smaller, more easily controlled force. This is, of course, part of their effort to um, you know make sure pr to prevent doom stacking and all of that. Uh, what helps with positioning is an Admiral's Maneuver skill and uh, traits like Lone Wolf and Capital Ship Raider Tech from the Trade Interdiction Doctrines help uh, increase this penalty for your enemy. So the idea is to make small capital raiding forces more competitive if you tech yourself up correctly and you have a trained Admiral in charge. So looking at the screenshot, uh, you can see the base value. You get a uh, um, debuff from being uh, depending on your terrains like Fords and Archipelagos seems to give minus 15% as it's currently balanced and uh, low positioning uh, affects your attack screening and anti-air and all of those things and uh, moving on tooltips now give a great breakdown of where damage is coming from we kind of saw this with the convoys and uh, you can see which deb uh, damage uh, each weapon type is doing or not doing and uh, it's kind of summarized at the top of the interface. So this is kind of similar to the Stellaris efficiency of your weapons thing. Maybe. I don't know. I'm sure it works similar to that. But just like how in Stellaris, how you can see whether energy or projectile or missiles are doing pretty well. You can see uh, how well your light guns are doing and all of that. So we can see light guns. Uh, have done 167 total damage, which is 40% of our total outgoing damage and 9% of the enemy health done dealt with. 
Uh, next section uh, talks about entering and exiting combat. So once the initial battle starts, task forces, more task forces can join, but when they do join, they get put in an incoming box similar to how it worked before. Uh, the time spent there depends on their organization levels and uh, the lower the organization, the longer they have to wait to join. Uh, the or this organization is affected by moving, but also giving manual orders to a fleet. Uh, so whenever ships are called to combat, they'll take an organization hit and uh, it slows them down from joining in the combat. Uh, and similar delays also apply for missions like convoy rating or escort uh, at suboptimal efficiency. So it's harder to bring all your power to bear at the same time. Uh, but on the flip side, if you take out the enemy side before incoming ships arrive, the battle ends and you can run away or the sides have to respot each other if they still want to fight. So the idea here is to help subs and other radars out by allowing hit and run battles and not, oh, we caught one destroyer from the German fleet, so let's and destroy the entire Kriegsmarine. And we can see a, a, a picture of ships bravely running away. Um, and in terms of existing combat, you can, uh, uh, you can, you know, order hit and run stuff directly or something that happens when ships take enough damage, which is, uh, you know, based on how you set up your aggression levels of your task forces. And uh, retreating is a process. It, it takes some time, but uh, it this, is, of course, is affected by naval doctrines, weather, terrain, and the speed of the ships. So slow, clanky ships will not be able to run away as faster. Uh, it'll be shown, as in this screenshot, with a progress bar. So you can kind of, you know, grab your popcorn, bite your nails, sweat it out as to see if your fleet can get away. And... Uh, also, there will now be critical hits, which can slow ships down and making it harder to run away. So a ship with a jammed radar, or jammed radar, jammed rudder, two very different things there, has a 90% penalty to escaping cough, cough, Bismarck, cough, cough. Uh, and of course, keeping, you know, escaping is important for keeping a battle from becoming too decisive. You know, if you want to cut your losses or like, hey, I sunk enough ships, let's get out of here before reinforcements arrive. Uh, this also is where submarines come in. So submarines, uh, they can follow normal torpedo rules, but are also free to circumvent them when it comes to escaping ships. So if you have a submarine hiding in the battle, they can engage the enemy capital ships as they start to run away. But this does reveal them, uh, depending on doctrine levels, it leaves them exposed to return fire from enemy anti-submarine vessels. Uh, we can see, you know, a screenshot with the combat, and you see the progress bar, kind of like you have on land combat, kind of like the colored number or whatever. And uh, it should, you know, it looks like uh, the Americans and the Japanese are duking it out here. Looks very cool. Um, sounds like some pretty, pretty neat reworks. And I'm definitely looking forward to submarines next week because whether or not if you have like a fleet moving through a zone or ships moving through a zone, can like a submarine just kind of one-off torpedo something and not get drawn into a combat? You know, I'm thinking like the USS Indianapolis or the Shinano or, you know, a lot of U-boats sinking British ships uh, in the Atlantic side of the war. So we shall see what happens next week. But of course, let's finish off with rejected titles. Sinking, sinking inside the box for a change. But I'm bravely retreating in the face of underwhelming odds. Man those guns and stop writing dumb titles and post already, podcat. So yes, thank you, Podcat, for actually posting this dev diary. Um, hope you enjoyed my quick overview, kind of paraphrasing everything, putting it in layman's terms. Uh, not as much to speculate on. I mean, it's more. This is a more mechanical dev diary, but still interesting stuff. I don't know how different this is going to work than the other system, but it sounds like generally you should be able to have smaller uh, combats instead of just giant you know, into Pirates of Caribbean 3 type naval battles. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this overview. If you did, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and check out my Patreon page. Thank you all so much for watching, and until the next one, this is Mikey Panzerator signing out. See ya, nerds.